Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here, and today I'm so excited because we're tackling the soft pretzel. Now, have you tried to make these at home and they end up misshapen, or even worse, they're bready and dry on the inside? Well, today I'm gonna share with you the perfect recipe for soft pretzels at home. So let's go. So to get started, we need some yeast. And that is really important when making soft pretzels at home. Having enough yeast in your recipe to give your pretzels a nice loftiness, to keep them nice and soft, is key. So I have two packages of active dry yeast and a half cup of light brown sugar or dark brown sugar. It's really up to what you have in your pantry. I'm just gonna place this in two cups of warm water and it's always important when you're proofing yeast to use water that's around 100 to 110 degrees. That's really the optimal temperature for yeast to proof. So this sugar, I'm just dissolving it in the water. It's going to help the yeast come alive really, really quickly. It's gonna act as food, the yeast is gonna develop. So let this sit off to the side for a few minutes until it starts to foam and bubble. And while that's happening, I have six and a half cups of bread flour. Now this is a lot. This is a good size batch of pretzels because you're gonna wanna make these. And the best part about this recipe is that you could make them, bake them, and even freeze them for later. They're really fantastic. So six and a half cups of bread flour. And to this, I'm going to add four tablespoons of coarse kosher salt. Now this is kosher salt guys this isn't fine table salt so if that's all you have at home that fine table salt you need to reduce the amount of sodium because you don't want these to be too salty so we use coarse salt here in the test kitchen so four tablespoons that's also a quarter of a cup of salt i'm just going to mix this together with my hands and to this mixture i'm going to add one stick of unsalted butter that's cut into small cubes and that's really nice and cold now this is similar to i'd say making scones or biscuits or pastry i'm using my hands but you could use a pastry blender if you'd like you could even start this process in the food processor that would be easy as well we're going to short the butter into the flour and that just means breaking up the little pieces of butter with your hand coating them with flour and evenly distributing them throughout the flour mixture this will take not too long maybe a couple minutes but you know what it's something to do i, I kind of like this work you know it's it's almost mindless in a way but it's a real way to connect with your food and if you have hot hands, you might wanna use one of those pastry blenders. Incorporate this together. And you can see over here, our yeast mixture is foaming away. All of that sugar is really helping to develop the yeast. This recipe is one of my favorites. This soft pretzel recipe is really great. And it's from a dear friend of ours uh, here at Martha Stewart Living. Her name is Lena Krasinski, and she was the founder of a, an amazing pretzel shop here in New York, and she provided us with this recipe. It really is fantastic, so I would encourage you guys to try it at home. All right, so our mixture looks good. You can see all of the butter has been evenly incorporated. There's almost like a coarse crumminess to the flour mixture, and I'm just gonna wipe my hands. And now all we need to do is attach it to the stand mixer, add our yeast, which I'm gonna do right here. And now it's time to attach this to our stand mixer. Now, and I'm using a dough hook today, so this is really important. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna attach the dough hook and we're gonna place this on a medium speed until the dough comes together. And then we're gonna to continue to knead with the dough hook attachment for about five to six minutes until we end up with a nice, smooth and elastic dough. All right, it's been about five minutes and our dough is really elastic. Since it is such a big batch, I'm using my giant stand mixer, but you could, if you wanted to, and you just had like a standard tabletop stand mixer, you could also cut this recipe in half. This way it would work nicely in your standard five quart stand mixer. So once you knead this dough into a semi-cohesive dough, we're going to put this into a glass bowl, cover with plastic wrap, and this goes into the refrigerator for eight hours, but it's really great if it sits in the refrigerator overnight. So I would plan on making these pretzels 
the day after you make the dough. So it's starting to come together as one nice ball. I'm just gonna round it out a little bit with the palms of my hands right into a bowl. You can even keep this in the stand mixer bowl that you have. Cover with plastic, and this goes into the refrigerator for eight hours up to overnight. Okay, so the dough has been in the refrigerator overnight. It's nice and cold, but you can see it's expanded slightly. This still maintains a good amount of structure because it is kind of technically a drier dough. It's not super, super wet, so this is exactly how it should look. And before I start rolling out my dough and portioning it into beautiful pretzel shapes, I wanna start on the poaching liquid for the pretzels because that is a really important part of this process. So I have eight cups of regular water that's heating up in a nice wide pot. Now, if you have something that's shallow and wide, anything like that, it will work in this application. You just don't want anything too, too narrow. Otherwise you won't be able to simmer as many pretzels at one time. To this, I'm gonna add a half a cup of beer, which is really great. It adds great flavor, and it's also gonna lend a wonderful color to our pretzels in the end. A quarter of a cup of brown sugar. You can use light or dark, whatever you have access to. And a half a cup of baking soda. And this poaching liquid is going to simulate what has been used in the past, which we don't really use that much anymore, which is lye. And lye gives a really great color and crust to pretzels, but this combination of ingredients, the baking soda, the sugar, and the beer, all together kind of mimic that food grade lye to give your pretzels a really great color and crust in the end. So just mix this together and let it come up to a simmer. We don't wanna boil this mixture. We just wanna bare simmer because we don't want our pretzels to become misshapen in this liquid. So while this is heating up, I'm going to take the dough out of this bowl. Oh, it's nice and cold. You should do this while the dough is nice and cold because it's much easier to handle and to shape. You can flour your work surface just a little bit and your hands. And you can use rolling pin. I'm just gonna kind of squash the dough out with my hands. I'm looking for a 14 by 12 inch rectangle. And now I'm gonna cut this into pieces, 12 long strips. So I'm just gonna use my ruler as a guide. It's almost about an inch in thickness. And using a pizza wheel, which is really great, I'm going to just cut these into strips. Again, about an inch in thickness. And you know what? This is a really fun recipe to do with friends, to do with kids, because the dough itself is so durable. It's not too finicky. You can really have fun with kids and others in the kitchen. All right, might have a little one here on the end, but I'm just gonna move these strips of dough over. Now working with one at a time, you're gonna roll the dough into a snake about 18 to 20 inches in length. You can taper the ends slightly and then you're gonna shape the pretzels. So what I like to do, you can do this on the work surface or you can do it in the air, but what you're gonna do is you're going to bring the two ends of dough together, cross them, cross them again and then you're going to bring this top portion down through the center. You can adjust as needed. And then you're gonna pinch the two ends down into the center, I would say, of this heart shape that you've created. And there you go. You have a really beautiful pretzel shape. Now, your first pretzel might not come out as beautiful as you want it to be, but with practice, and you can get even creative here. If you wanna do different shapes, you can certainly do that, but it's pretty simple. All you're doing is twisting the rope. I'll show you one more time here. You're bringing the two ends up, crossing them over twice, and then bringing the two ends over, pushing down into the base of the pretzel, and there you go you have a beautiful pretzel shape and you can keep going with the rest.
Our baking soda and beer mixture is just coming up to a simmer. And this is absolutely perfect. All of our pretzels are shaped. And now it's time to boil, boil the pretzels. So gently pick them up and place them into the liquid. And these are just going to kind of simmer in this mixture for about 30 seconds, not too long at all. I'll do probably two at a time uh, so they don't stick together. Some of the pretzels are a little bit bigger than the others. So what I would say is poach or simmer the same size pretzels together because we're gonna bake those at the same time as well. The smaller ones you might wanna reserve to their own baking sheet. Now, as you can see, the pretzels kind of puff up nicely in this mixture and it really only takes a little bit of time. You might wanna push them down into the poaching liquid a little bit so that they're completely submerged. And now I'm gonna just transfer these right onto a rimmed baking sheet that has been well oiled, or you could also spray with nonstick cooking spray. And you could fit about six of these pretzels on a baking sheet at a time. And I'm gonna add some additional pretzels to the liquid. And I'm just going to put two more in and now I'm going to dress up these pretzels. Now, you can really be creative with the toppings that you decide that you want to put on top of your pretzels. Pretzel salt is always kind of classic. You can get this online or you can find it at specialty shops, but a good sprinkling of salt is always really fantastic on a pretzel. I like a little bit of cheese. This is finely grated Gruyere cheese, but you could use Parmesan cheese, you could use cheddar. Aged cheeses tend to work better. They have less moisture and they'll crisp up nicely in the oven, but you wanna make sure that you're sprinkling while the pretzel is wet, while it still has moisture on top of it so that the topping adheres. So repeat the process until we have six on this tray and then they're going right into a super hot oven. So make sure the oven is preheated to 450 degrees. And an important thing here, guys, is that you wanna make sure that the rack is in the upper third of the oven. All right, guys, these pretzels look amazing. They're gonna be even better when they're baked. So again, 450 degrees, and these will stay in the oven for about 10 minutes until they're nice, dark and golden brown. All right, guys, the pretzels are out of the oven. Now, I like to take them off the baking sheet and cool them slightly before serving, but the best thing about a soft pretzel is that it's warm. Now, if you wanted to, you can make these in advance and throw them in the freezer, like I said before, and all you need to do when they're frozen and you're ready for a snack, pop them in a hot oven for a few minutes and they'll get nice and crusty on the outside and really soft on the inside. Now, I'm gonna go for the cheese, Pretzel, still nice and warm. These really are the best soft pretzels that you will ever make at home. I encourage you, whoa, this is so hot. I don't know if you can see how steamy and amazing it is. It's really chewy and moist and you know what? A fantastic recipe. And as always guys, if you have any kitchen conundrums, please reach out to us using the hashtag kitchen conundrums. We love to hear from you and we'd love to solve your kitchen problems. Enjoy. And as always guys, click like and subscribe.